And now for something completely different. Today I am in Liverpool and we are attending a photography event to do some portrait photography. We are going to do some smoke grenade portrait photography. It sounds crazy and yeah, I can't wait to get into this. Kaz and I are up here uh, representing our small business, Luminosify, with our light painting tubes. I'm not sure that um, either the venue we're going to do the portrait photography in or outdoors at this time of day is going to be conducive to doing light painting, but we've got them with us anyway, just in case they can help us with the portrait photography. So this event is run by 0151 Shooters, supporting a mental health charity called Calm. It's been sponsored by the Smoke Grenade Company and by MBP. This video is not sponsored, by the way. It's just me on my day out doing some photography with a load of other people with a similar interest, which is great. Today, I'm going to be using my 50mm Sigma Art Prime. I'm going to give that a run for its money. I bought it for astrophotography because it is, I think it's F4, it's really fast. Um, but I'm going to be putting it through its paces today with some portrait photography. And it's not something I've really done before. So it's going to be an interesting experience to try a different type of photography for once. Okay, so the event has started. There's a bunch of models all sitting in different places. Apparently there's, a, there's, there's something like a telephone box, nice seating areas, and we're just going to go around and take photos of people. I don't like people. I like mountains, clouds, the Milky Way. They don't talk back. Uh, social anxiety a little maybe, <laughs> but uh, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. It was a nervous start to the event as I really didn't know what I was doing. I spent most of my time just allowing the models to do their thing, sitting back in the shadows like a peeping Tom whilst other photographers who knew what they were doing did their thing. As you can see from this shot, there was plenty of natural light coming into the main room of the hotel. I wasn't using a flash and I was shooting handheld relying on a wide aperture to gather the light that I needed. The video was taken from a DJI Pocket 2, which I had attached to the hot shoe mount on my camera. I was trying to stick to what I knew best from landscape composition, like in this shot, having a very strong central composition. The first photo I showed you was based on the rule of thirds. So yeah, it's kind of like, models in different places, people are asking them to do poses and I'm like, I have no idea what to ask them to do. That's what I, that's what I was doing, I'll just put my camera next to yours and I'll take the same shot and maybe that'll be good because I have no idea what's going on. The models were just working it and also taking direction from far more experienced portrait photographers. Here we are trying to freeze frames and movement, adding to the story the image is trying to portray. Like landscape photography, it's important that an image has a message or story for the viewer, a simple one they can relate to. Like these two have a story of dancing, frivolity, simple concepts, not the nonsense people make up about a urinal at the tape mob. Right, let's go see what's through here. Ooh. break in the place. A very dark area there. Can't really see much. Yeah. And the phone box. Let's talk about the Sigma 50mm R f1.4. I have it hooked up to my Astro modified Canon 6D Mark II. Not that the mod helps in this situation at all. Even opened up fully to 1.4, I had the ISO set to 3200 to get a shutter speed of 1125. And that was with someone using a small LED light, and this was in the dark room. That ISO is way too high, perhaps using a tripod and a longer shutter speed would help, but proper lighting would be the key here, whether static or strobe. Even in this better lit room, I was at ISO 1000 for this shot. Overall though, I really enjoyed using the 50mm Prime. I was told that this focal length is more akin to what the natural eye sees, and I think this photo shows that well. However, 
You can tell I wasn't paying attention to my settings. These sofas were next to a large front window and were much brighter than the fireplace on the opposite side of the room. I really could have dropped the ISO and increased the shutter speed here. But back to composition. In landscape photography, you are aiming for a good balance across the frame. And although both models are on the left here, they are looking into the photo, which helps a little. Also, I haven't blurred the background too much because I think the relative symmetry of the fireplace, the two chairs, and by pure luck, the lamp versus the side table in opposite corners, helped bring some balance to the image. Now I'm recording, this is what I do all my vlogs on. <laughs> I have no idea whether this is a good idea or not, but I have just stuck my 100 to 400 on. I don't think I've got the f-stops without a flash to get decent light here, so I'm going to have to push the ISO. But I'm going for a little bit of compression with a telephoto lens and some portraits. Let's see what happens. So, what is compression? The background of the image will appear larger and compressed closer to the subject. However, as you'll see in these next photos, the background was right behind each model, so fully failed in that attempt to achieve compression. Also, with the telephoto lens, the aperture doesn't go anywhere near as fast as the Sigma R 50mm Prime because, well, I haven't won the lottery. Fast telephotos are usually primes, rather than zooms and they are super expensive and contain enough glass to recreate the pyramid outside the Louvre. I went as fast as I could which was 4.5 to 5.6 dependent on zoom but even then I had to really push the ISO to hand shoot. The further you zoom in the harder it is to keep a photo from blurring especially with no in-body stabilization even though the lens does have some optical stabilization. Luckily, there was a bright outside area, so I spent some time out there and was able to drop the ISO into a reasonable range, taking this photo using a classic rule of thirds composition against the graffiti wall, and coming up in a second, another photo against a second graffiti wall. You can see how busy it was, lots of photographers and models, but it's events like this where you can network, learn, and have some real fun with your photography, trying out new disciplines, which can somewhat overlap with what you know, but also teach you something new. But before I go into a summary of everything I learnt, I didn't manage to film the urban smoke grenade photography, but I did get this epic shot in the rain wide aperture to get a fast shutter speed to capture the texture in the smoke, continuous shutter on and spam away. You don't get long until these grenades run out, so make sure you're ready. So what did I learn from my first portrait photography experience? Starting with composition, use strong tools like a central composition or rule of thirds. Keep it simple, stupid. Using compression, which I failed to, or wide apertures to separate the model from the background really helps the image pop. And keep your edges clean. These are simple, minimal compositions and you don't want any distractions. These are all things that I have learned doing landscape photography and it seems they apply to portraiture as well. When I got the images back into Photoshop, I was using way less contrast than in my landscape edits and there's a lot more focus on color management. You can change a tree from green to orange to make it look like autumn, but mess around too much with hue here and you can very easily make the images look unnatural, unless you are genuinely photographing Shrek. To make the images pop more, I used the new depth blur neural filter on the backgrounds, desaturated and even darkened them to help make the image pop more, and with the absence of any controlled lighting, some heavy vignetting too. Lastly, I learned a lot from other photographers and models. I didn't say anything to any of the models while shooting. I didn't know what to say. But you, as the photographer, are their eyes. Don't be afraid to direct them to make them and the photo look better. A creative vision and some pre-planning helps, which some of the other photographers did do. Without controlled lighting, manage your settings accordingly. I've already mentioned this, but as always, lower ISOs do really help image quality. Last but not least, probably most actually, is I detect autofocus. I don't have it and have never really been in a position where I needed to constantly manage autofocus points. I have a lot of images where feet are in focus but faces aren't. 
I know there are certain sections of the internet where that can be, like, profitable, but that is definitely not what this event was about. I had to discard many more photos than I would have liked due to their either incorrect focus or shutter speeds being too long and causing motion blur. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle through my first attempt at portrait photography. If you did, let me know in your comments your thoughts on it. And I'd better say the mandatory like and subscribe, so please subscribe and like if you enjoy this content. There, we're done.